Hello everybody and welcome to my channel. If this is your first time on this channel, please note that I'm Gloria Vili Kayembe. And on this channel, we do share some content on Christianity, lifestyle, because I like to document my journey in South Africa, and vlogs, END, but I'm not a good vlogger, so I do try. <laughs> So today I'm going to be sharing with you guys my 10 favorite South African dishes. And I know that in one of my videos in Culture Shock, or well, Culture Shock video, if you guys have not watched it, please go down in the, this, in, in the, in, like in my previous videos, or I'll try and put it in a description box, where I shared that uh, it was a struggle for us when we got to SA to kind of adapt to the food. And I was only 12 years old then, but things that I do love now as a 32 year old woman is completely different guys. And in South Africa, most of the dishes contain meat. My South African brothers and sisters love meat and if you have grown up in South Africa, meat has become a part of your ID. <laughs> Whether you like it or not, meat is involved in one way or the other, you just adapt, you know. So yeah, so the first thing that I would like to share with you guys that happens to be my favorite, my favorite that I do try from time to time and I do think you guys should also try is Maguena. Uh, uh, uh. Maguena it's, um, well, where I come from, we call it Benye, which is ours is a quite small and sweet, but ever they have Maguena, it's like, Maguena is like, you know, like they, they, they take it through the whole baking process like they, they do it as if they are baking bread but it's not baking bread the dough is a bit lighter and then they will fry it in, in, in oil so it comes out so big and um, I used to love eating it for um, for lunch at, at work or breakfast. It all depends on how you want to ride it. So you can either put poloni in it or you can put cheese in it. I'll just buy my plane and then I will warm it up and then put some peanut butter in it. Woo guys, unless if I have my own, or oh, maybe I will just buy it plain, yes. And then put my own peanut, my own cheese and my own poloni. Guys, it is something you should give a try when you come to South Africa. It is fantastic. Or even wherever you're watching from, you can give it a try, guys. And just know, Gloria told you about this South African <laughs> delicacy. This is something that I didn't like as a child. But then when I got here and I think I also grew older and I started like, trying out different dishes because... How can I be in South Africa, but I don't, I don't know how to cook South African dishes. So this is something that I took upon myself. I'm like, I gotta try these things out and see how it goes. So the um, tribe, which they call Mohud, Mohud, Mohudu, Mohudu. Guys, please, I want to learn how to speak your language properly because my closer brothers and my, my closer friends did not teach me how to speak, like, to speak certain things properly because they only spoke English to me. Hello? <laughs> so yes, mohudu is usually cooked or eaten with um, steamed bread. <laughs> you know, speaking about steamed bread, my my friend, one of my friends said that she started um, baking at the age of three. So she's the one that actually taught me how to bake because I was struggling. I would try different uh, dough, I would try different flour and my brain would just come out like it's like a rock. You can literally hurt someone <laughs> with the bread that I was making and she was like, mm -mm. So one day I gave her a call. I'm like, my friend, please just, 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 just guide me through it. And then she helped me. And today I can say I can, I can, I can make bread. I can make bread. So yeah, they try to do it with steamed bread, which is also steamed bread. You don't put it in the oven. Steamed bread. It's like you will, you will put water in a boiling, um, what do you call it? You can put boiling water into a pot and then you put another plate on top of the pot. So it will, the bread will cook with the steam. So yeah, that's what I call steamed bread. So back to the tribe. <laughs> so the tribe in South Africa, I don't know if there's a difference between, I think there's a difference between goat skin and cow skin. Because the tribe, the way they, because tribe is something that is eaten by a lot of people in South Africa, you will usually find it in stores. You'll find it in butcheries and it is cleaned properly. It is 
very nice and soft it's like i think they take it through a process which is so different because i remember when i was a child whenever mom would cook tribe it would be like oh my god like when we were back home i can never forget so it's gonna be like oh my god like really it's a whole process and it to take longer but i've reckoned that tribe doesn't take as long here um what whenever i cook it whenever i buy it from the store and it's something guys that you should give it a try give it a try like there's different ways to make it again i do try like i said in my other video with the help of different um south african chefs or south african people that are really showcasing how south african meals are done i can i can i can cook something i can cook something up and it comes out delicious so mohudu is something you should try guys don't come to south africa and you don't try mohudu with steamed bread or some of them some people eat it with rice some people eat it with samp like for me i we eat it with pap <laughs> we eat it with fufu because Congolese people and fufu, ay, 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 ay. I can eat it with rice, but for uh, other family members, it with fufu. <laughs> so, let me go to the next one. This is called Samp and Beans. Umosho. Please, guys, again, if my pronunciation is wrong, don't come for me. <laughs> so, Umosho, it's Samp and Beans, like like guys they even said once again it is sold in stores like already prepacked samp and beans and another thing also i'll say that the beans is usually soft you know and these are things that i never used to eat when i was a child when i was like whenever mama cooked samp back home we'd be like oh god back home if you're cooking maize like samp and beans it's a all day affair and mind you it's cooked on on charcoal but it would take so long and it would be like uh-uh when mom is cooking it we're all like we want to get done however in essay it's a whole different ball game because samp and beans come pre-packed and then of course it kind of takes long but not as long as it used to but guys this is something you can that you can try out for your family for your children introduce it to them instead of them eating the same thing every single day sometimes it's good that they give it a try and it's quite delicious so musho and sometimes you can even add meaty bones in it like mine i would try sometimes to put in beef bones so mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> i'm getting hungry and then let us leave musho now let's go to hey hey every ketonian knows this fish and chips and you know I underestimated fish and chips so much until when I went to I went to my homeland. I went to visit my homeland in April um this year. Like I wanted to order some fish and chips, yeah, because I've I'm used to how fish and chips come like whenever they serve it to us here in SA, like you know it, it's a whole it's it's a whole thing. But then, and it was quite affordable. So when I went home, uh, we went into this restaurant and well, not a restaurant, it was like a supermarket. So I wanted to eat the fish and chips. And I was standing there, I'm standing there looking at the fish itself, looking at the chips, looking at the fish, looking at the chips, and looking at the prices. I'm like, what? <laughs> oh, and kept on me taking so you take it so lightly and i don't know if it's because of the type of fish that it is more expensive or i have no idea but that 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 thing was quite expensive but anyway fish and chips for every keptonian is something that you should really give a try guys keptonian someone that loves seafood like my husband we have tried and tried we have we have we have we have been there the calamari the prawns and stuff cape town is the place to be and it's it's just it's just it's just beautiful it's really nice and then the next one is pochicos mm. the pochicos mm, cooked mostly by my colored brothers and sisters or Africaners, I can say it like that. The pochico is a mixture of different stuff. Like they are just cooking it all in one pot. That's what they call it pochico. So it's all cooked on one pot and the pot is so I'll try and put a picture. It's round, yeah. And then cooked on fire. And tripe is usually is usually cooked also like it can also be cooked on that. 
so it all depends but however Portugal is a mixture of different um, food in, in one pot and I remember one of my friends mommy like my high school best friends mom she's where well, she's colored so she made um, for those of you who don't know what colored is is biracial so she made a nice is it acne Yo, guys, it was so nice, but it was very spicy. I remember eating it for the first time. I'm tearing up, but I keep eating. I'm tearing. They're like, Gloria, calm down. I'm like, it was so nice, but then it was so hot. But then, yeah, it was a good experience. And every time when I went to visit them, I remember in my high school years, my mom would be like, I know what to do for you. <laughs> I know how to cook for you. So it is very nice. You guys should try once again if you want if you want to experience these things just go to make friends with south africans and um they will take it the right places and ask them just be and I, one thing i've learned is that sometimes they feel like we don't want to learn about their culture about the, their food but as long as you live in Asia, you you have you are bound to want to list to, to learn about their food about the, about their culture and that, that's what makes you diverse you know as, as as an african it makes you diverse so yes portugal is a one to go area and ha one of my favorites guys i'm smiling from ear to ear is butter chicken imagine eating butter chicken with the roti <sighs> yo guys and this is a dish that i haven't even mastered like there used to be a spice um that you believe i used to make that had the butter chicken spice i is, i still haven't mastered how to make butter chicken and i'm still struggling guys i am struggling but butter chicken please if you are making butter chicken uh, I think it should be included as part of um, like wedding menu or something <laughs> and invite me to a wedding I'll just be on the butter chicken roll <laughs> I'll just have that with roots and I'm like peace I'm done <laughs> So yes, I love butter chicken with the roti. Some people can also eat it with rice. And I've tasted um, butter chicken from different um, restaurants, like different Indian restaurants or um, yeah, Indian cuisine. And I've noticed that it almost takes, tastes different, different on almost every um, every place. But however, some people really know how to make a killer butter chicken. Like who? Okay, let me land the plane now guys. Let me land the plane. <laughs> now I am going to tell you guys about the braai. <laughs> braai is a South African, well, it's a word for, well, it's an Afrikaans word for a barbecue. So when you come to South Africa, you are, you should know that South Africans look for a reason for them to braai. <laughs> for them to have a barbecue. You don't have a barbecue only when uh, you are meeting up with friends. You could even, you could just, well, there's an occasion for everything. Meeting up with friends, coming together as a family. Oh, you, there's an holiday, public holiday, we bride. Um, like, what is a public holiday like in South Africa without bride? <laughs> so yes, bride, once again, you have a mixture of the meat, like of a sausage, sausage rolls. You each are called borovors. And then, ooh, ah, yeah. And then you have, um, for those who eat pork, there is pork. For those who eat beef alone, there is beef, there is chicken. And then on the side, you get, you get some potato salad, you get some coleslaw, you put some, well, it's coleslaw, the, the one mix, but anyway, <laughs> you get some salads on the side. But my favorite side when it comes to barbecue, uh, to a barbecue or braai is creamy spinach guys my south african brothers and sisters this is something i'm still learning how to do i haven't mastered is how to make that creamy chicken but the things that you should really try out and look at them smiling talking about food from ear to ear ah hmm. It's a crime. <laughs> but anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Please let me know what are your South African favorite dishes. Mm -hmm. I've only started the ones that I've tried and the ones that I'm good at. The others, please introduce to me. Like, I would like to know because I want to know more. I want to know more, yes. I want to know more from what I already know. <laughs> 
and let us see maybe i might end up liking it my children might like it or anyhow so thank you so much for watching this video i will see you next time